All right, there we are. We are live. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Wednesday night here on the live stream, Ham Radio Dude. And I'm joined by Morton LB0FI. What's going on, Morton? Well, it's uh, 2 a.m. here in Norway, so it's way past the bedtime for a middle-aged man with a receding hairline. But uh, <laughs> I'll try to stay awake through all the way through the stream. Very good. Uh, yeah, so uh, obviously you're, uh, you're in Norway, um, and you've been licensed for, for quite a while now, right? Uh, well, I've been licensed years? since uh, December 2020. Uh, okay. Like most new hams, I took my license during the pandemic. Oh, so, yeah. Didn't, well, ha hey. didn't have any anything useful to do, so I figured I might as well get my license and get through with it and haven't regretted uh, a day since then. It's a fun experience because uh, there's so much you can get into, and it, that's kind of what we're going to explore today. Uh a amateur radio incorporates so much engineering building uh experimentation that uh, you really never have a dull moment if you don't want a dull moment and uh one of the things that i saw you doing in some of the discord chats was uh you started making different products and different things and you you're using fusion 360 as i recall um yeah do you want to show some of those things that you you've kind of designed already and then we'll kind of segue into what we're doing today well, I got, got one thing here, and this is uh, the dipole I'm currently making. Uh, I'm going to put up some kits and some assembled ones on uh, probably on eBay uh, after Easter. Uh, simple design, uh, winder and a feed point in one, designed to either go on top of a mast or uh, or just be, be strung up with some wire. And uh, this is the assembled version. Uh, sorry about the soda beam wire. It doesn't really play well on the green screen. Oh, it's um, okay. But uh, yeah, it's supposed to be simple and uh, and field repairable. Um, as probably some of the people that's already seen my channel, I like to do portable uh, radio. So I want things to be as simple as possible. It makes a lot of sense. We were kind of talking beforehand too, that when you are bringing something out to the field and it has multiple links or multiple, uh, multiple components to it, that's more points for it to potentially you know, be a failure point or more variables essentially. So yeah. the less, the less fail points you have, the better, uh, you know, um, I was also going to just kind of ask you since you got licensed a couple of years ago, is that when you started using fusion 360 to start kind of tinkering with the designs or uh, when did you start getting yeah. into designing? Things? Uh, I actually started uh, designing a little bit before I got my license. I got a 20 year old RV and, um, uh, well, when it's 20 year old, parts aren't really that available. So uh, yeah. instead of buying expensive parts, I figured I could buy a 3D printer and uh, design my own parts. Uh, and the learning curve was really, really steep. But uh, yeah, yeah, there there are some some of my own designs in the RV now. That's pretty cool. Uh, and I definitely agree with you about like, hey, you know, sometimes it's hard to find parts for those things, or sometimes they're really expensive. I was talking to you offline about uh, my truck, and the window, uh, the window just completely separated from the track on my truck. But what happened really was a couple pieces of plastic broke off. I'm sure that they intended it to happen. So you would pay big bucks to go to the dealership and get it fixed. And I looked all over, couldn't find anything. So, you know, I made up a couple of things that work as a I'm, right now that seems to be working perfect, but yeah, it's really awesome what you could do. And the kind of segues into kind of what we're going to do today. Uh, Fusion 360 is, I'm never going to argue that it's a better program than Tinkercad ever it, would it, be. It is, but <laughs> it's it's just so, so complicated uh, yeah. and I've never really mastered it well. And uh, we talked a little bit last week and you showed me Tinkercad and that uh, pretty much uh, seems like an easier easier way to do designing it, it you know and i think it is too uh tinkercad especially you know we're, we're kind of doing these series on my live streams about getting started into radio and uh, really engineering and uh, you know all this stuff together but uh it, it, there's a time where you're probably going to want 360 but until then if you're just getting your feet wet and you want to design certain things hey tinkercad's a great program i'll pull it up on the screen here in just a second but i wanted to give a shout out to everybody here um, so if you guys want to leave a, I don't know, a one in the chat, I'll say hello. <laughs> yeah. You're probably a little bit better on that than I am. Yeah. I'm pretty fast sometimes <laughs> <laughs> when you lived, uh, when you lived in Illinois, you didn't pick up with the, the fast talking or what? <laughs> well, it's been almost 30 years since I yeah. lived in Illinois. So, sure. uh, 
Um, my English is good on, on a on a good day. It's close to fluent, but uh, now sure. it's two a.m. So yeah, that's it's a, a little point. bit slower now. <laughs> that's a good point. Uh, hey, what's going on, Phil? What's going on, John? Hey, shooter, ready, stand by. What's going on, James? Uh, K zero B K O Brian, what's up, buddy? Hey, Reed A B A B eight A S. Sorry about that, Daniel uh, Molson V A three S D O and the Gaming Ham. What's going on, Ron? And uh, I saw Christiana in there earlier as well as a few other people. So Andy Cowley was there. He was first. Don and 5SKT was in there. And uh, I think I already said the gaming hand, but I'll say it again. Thanks for those super stickers, bud. And uh, Mike Miles, how's it going? So thanks for being here, guys. Uh, I'm going to show on the screen here just real quick what we're aiming to build today. In the aspect of being somebody completely new to Tinkercad and uh, maybe some of the tools or experimentation you could do to get a a product or a design that you're looking for. Hey, what's yeah, going on, Ron? I see, see Lawn Mower is trying to uh, to do some Norwegian here. It's probably using Google Translate, I guess. Something about Quebec. And yeah, are you participating in a Quebec CUSO party this weekend? Oh, okay. And well, are you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I'm, oh. I'll be, be running QRP all weekend. Uh, I'll be camping. So. Uh, oh, very nice. That'll be great. And with the band conditions now, uh, it'll be uh, it'll be tough running QRP, but I'll give it a shot. Hey, what's going on, Wild Cascadia Radio? She says, Morton. Yeah, hi there. All right, uh, let me go ahead and pull up that screen here. And okay, essentially, the concept was just we were looking for something very basic to build today. And a lot of people get telescoping masts from MFJ or spider beams, and most of them have, uh, you know, guy wire support, or they have antenna spacers. Uh, so basically what we're looking to do is make a, an antenna spacer for a DX commander. It looks like this. And if I break this down real quick, if I really break this down, basically you're going to see that what we're building today is just a bunch of circle squares and triangles, you know, so we're going to walk through that process and let me just not, there we go. Let me get that back to there. We're just going to walk through the process and see uh, what we could do. So, uh, Morton, if you want to pull up your screen as well. Yeah, I can do that. Let's see here. All right, cool. And I Let's... should probably start a new design, though, so we'll start yeah. from scratch. You got it. Let's start a new design from scratch. And along the way, I'm just going to kind of maybe explain certain things in Tinkercad and what they do as well. Um, we have a hard time of stopping at about... 8 p.m. my time tonight because uh, Ham Nation is on tonight. Yeah, uh, I just got to figure out there, create new design. Uh, that's how new I am to Tinkercad. All right, so you got a new design up, and uh, I'm going to use the same one. Let me just, can I switch those screens? How did I do that that one time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, 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 uh, well, that doesn't work. That's okay. Let me get mine off the screen. So what we're going to do is uh, let's go ahead and just... Um, we have this nice new fresh screen here, and our goal is to create basically an object that has uh, four quadrants, and they're all the same size. So uh, I think the best thing to do for us is to start with a, a rectangle uh, that's that's a little bit longer, and um, I'll also pull up my screen here if, you, if you'd like. Yeah, I, I got to follow along because yeah. I'm, I'm new at this. No problem. So uh, as my dimensions are on this, we're going to be six millimeters high. So you got the square in now, and then we're just going to bring it down to six millimeters. Uh, let's see. I managed to zoom, though. Uh, let's you, see. Yeah, six millimeters. Okay, cool. And um, roughly from point to point, uh, at this point, it doesn't matter. But let's bring it out, uh, let's say, 132 millimeters uh, in, in length. Uh, okay, I got to zoom out here. Uh uh, just a square, right? Uh, right now, just a, just a more of a rectangle. So 132 yeah. millimeters. Oh, and then our width, here. our width, let's make it uh, 25. And I'm glad you're using millimeters. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Now, there is something also while, while you're getting that I want to point out on the screen. And if on my screen, you can see... On the bottom left, there's something here that says snap to grid. And if you click that, there's multiple options. I turn this off. The, whoa. Okay. <laughs> that didn't go well. No, nope. I turn it off. And the reason I turn that off 
is uh, if you don't turn it off, every time you hit like the left arrow or the right arrow or you go to adjust this, it's going to go yeah. five millimeters at a time, a millimeter at a time. So it's going to jump and it makes aligning everything kind of a pain. Um, and so we now both have, uh, I'm going to pull you up on the screen here real quick. We now both have uh, uh, a rectangular shape, six by 25 by whatever it was, 132. Three yeah. or one, what did I say? One thirty-two, didn't I? One thirty-two by twenty-five, I think. There we go. I was a little bit off. Yeah, one thirty-two um, by twenty-five. And we need a nice rounded uh, corner for 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 basically uh, each of those four corners that we're going to have. And uh, you know, the best thing I think to do at this point is we're going to grab a, a cylinder shape object or a circular object, and we're just going to kind of bring it in. Now, again, we're going to go down to six millimeters. And uh, I could also now type... Now, I figured that the, the six key on the numeric keypad actually zooms in, so... Oh, nice. Well, that, not nice, but... Um, okay, i got to undo something here. Sure, not a problem. While you're undoing that, I'm going to just kind of explain one more thing to everybody, too, at home. The circle isn't really uh, a circle, as you can see there's almost like choppy blocks that are creating a quasi circle and we can semi rectify that by selecting the circle. And then when we select the cylinder or the circle, we get this little box on the left hand side that pops up and I'm sorry if it's super, uh, super small, but there's something here that says sides and we're just going to go ahead and increase the sides to 64. That's the max that Tinkercad allows and it gives us more of a circular uh, or cylinder shape. Yeah, it seems to be looking good right now. Cool. And uh, now we have this circle, which obviously doesn't really sit flush with uh, with our 25 wide rectangle. So we're going to select that circle and we have multiple selections or points on the circle that we could select. They're shown in uh, squares. And so if I were to hold down my shift key and select one of the corner squares, and drag this, it's going to resize the whole cylinder shape. Now that includes the height. Um, so what happened was, is we uniformly made yeah. it bigger. Um, so we're gonna kind of get it to a point where we feel it's in a good spot. And we probably wanna bring it back down to six. Again, you could just type in six right here to make it easy. Oh, it zoomed yeah. for me too that time. <laughs> I'm just gonna uh, try to adjust it somewhere in the middle here. Yeah, no problem. Let me pull your screen up here real quick. Uh, so we'll be able to... We're now, probably we... close enough now. No, pretty, actually, we're not. Pretty close. What's going to happen is, is because it's not six millimeters uh, while you're doing that, the perception is that it's centered at some angle. But because of the height difference, it actually does throw yeah. it off a little bit. So. I'm still a little bit too small here. Okay. Um, I'll give you the dimensions here in a second. I'm also a little bit small. So uh, again, I'm just going to do the same thing and drag it out. That's probably the only time you hear two guys saying that they're a little bit too small. <laughs> uh, um, let me see here. I'm going to get us all back on the screen if I could. I don't know how to do this for some reason. There we go. Uh, well, I'm not that far off, though. I lost you. Oh, there we are. Yep. Yeah, so basically you got it, though. What we're going to do now is, is once we're at our six millimeters in height, which, again, I'm not, um, basically we want to try to ensure that we're kind of like lined up so the rectangular piece meets the circle at an angle that appears to be natural and smooth. Um, and to do that, sometimes there's a lot of playing around, as you can see. Um, yeah, I, I'm missing Yeah, I don't that. think I'm, I'm too far off now, actually. Good. I think I'm closer than when we did our test run. Awesome. Let's see here. So six and, you know, so for example, on my screen there, I think that looks pretty close. Yeah, uh, but if I look at it at that angle, it comes out 
with a little bit of a, it comes out a little bit too much. So how could I rectify that? Well, maybe I could, again, bring this a little bit smaller. And uh, maybe I got to move it down a little bit. So, and it, it almost becomes a test of your patience at, at some point. Yeah. Uh, 3D design often does that, uh, <laughs> no matter what kind of software you use. I see Ron says in the chat, try doing this in Blender. That's confusing as, uh, yeah. So uh, I'm going to roll with this, although I have a little bit of an overhang here. And the, the thing is, is uh, if we had maybe more than an hour, uh, I could go all day and, and practice professional, yeah. you know, uh, OCD <laughs> type skills. But um, the thing is, though, when, when you print it, uh, those small uh, inconsistencies really don't show in the print, though. Right. And the fact that, you know, we're not making like aircrafts or anything like that, I think we're OK. And maybe if we were making an aircraft, we'd want to be a little bit more precise. Um, then we probably wouldn't use Tinkercad though. <laughs> <laughs> so once we have what we think is pretty good, now there's a, a trick we could do here. We can select both of our objects that are on the table, uh, being the rectangle and the circle. And uh, really we could just copy them and paste them. Should we group them first or? Uh, I was going to group them afterwards, but you could group it now. It, it okay. Would be yeah. Okay. And, uh, but, but then after we have a new one pasted, we're going to rotate it 180 degrees. What we're doing is we're trying to mirror, uh, that one side, right? And then I just am going to align them. And you show me that there's an align button here somewhere. Let's see. There. Right. So if you select everything right now, when you have them fairly close, you can yep. go to the upper right hand side of the screen. Uh, and there's something there that says align. And you, you could just hit that center align button from the angle I'm at right now, which will yep. then put everything kind of centered on each other. Right. If you were to hit it from the side, though, here's what would happen. Uh, yeah, that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, that, that's not what we're trying to do. Right. There would be no point for those circles. But now that we have, actually, we have uh, one portion of this already done. So now we can group it, select everything. And in the upper right-hand side area of the screen, you'll see this group button. And what grouping does is it makes it one solid object. So, so far, that doesn't look too bad, in my opinion. Let's see if I can get the perspective right so I can actually manage to select everything. There we go. Oh, hey, Jonathan, how you doing today? Uh, we're making this right here, and we're just kind of walking through. If you're getting started into Tinkercad for radio, one of the things that you might build, this being, uh, we'll call it an antenna spacer for yeah. a, a fiberglass pole. And um, yeah, who who hasn't tried to to make a multi-band fan vertical? <laughs> Well, we know I have. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I have as well, and uh, it's it's much better buying the complete kits. Mine it, failed after about two days, so it's, it's a lot easier. But again, I think the the testing, experimenting, and learning the learning thing is fun. So we're going to copy that thing that we just grouped. The uh, uh, I call it a band aid, but we're just going to copy it, and then after we copy and paste it, we're going to rotate it 180 degrees. Or no, I lied, 90 degrees. My apologies. And then, uh, sure enough, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to center both of them. So select them both and then align it. And this is one of those situations where we could align both of them and we'll get it perfectly. We should have a, a nearly perfect cross. Yeah, looks looks halfway decent here anyway. So I'm, I'm feeling like mine is a little bit off. Yeah, doesn't, doesn't <laughs> look at that. Maybe I didn't hit. No, I didn't hit center. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Yeah, my, mine looks a little bit off. I had both centers, though, so it's probably just a perception issue. It could be. Uh, I'm going to go ahead now, and we're kind of pretty much done with that point for right now. So I'm just going to select them both and, and, again, group them. Oops, I ungrouped them. <laughs> group them. There we go. And then let me take a look here and see kind of what we did next on here. 
Ah, uh, yes. So yeah. our next step, I remember, was uh, we wanted to make basically make a huge uh, square yeah. that is going to uh, essentially supersede or go over. Uh, you can see it on my screen, this huge square yeah. that's right here. And um, let me just back out of there. And so the reason we want to do that is so we can get this nice little curve here. Um, now, uh, you could just go ahead and put your antenna wire here, 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 and here, and then make a hole in the middle. But A, the hole would be too small, and that would be kind of thin. It would probably break under some kind of pressure. Yeah, if it would. Put this in the air, right? I've, I've done it that way, and yes, it'll break. <laughs> What's going on, uh, Shane, this side of the radio? And uh, the gaming ham, uh, 73 to you, and uh, have a good evening. Thank you for being here, bud. Um, so let's go ahead and... Uh, I'm going to kind of put this at, at a little bit of an angle. And so basically I'm making a diamond shape, I believe, from here. Obviously now we need to bring that down to six. And what are your dimensions there, Sean? Not sure yet. Uh, I will let you know in just a second. Six is the height for sure. Uh, we, yep. we know that by now. I'll just cheat and use your numbers here. Yeah, yeah. And let's try it with, um, that's kind of looking good. Let's see where you are now. Okay. Uh, let's try it with, uh, 115 on both the length and the width. Yeah. Uh, let's see. In my... Let's see if I can just, and then I just mark it all and uh, you see a line function, right? You got it, yeah. And in fact, maybe we're going to go a little bit bigger with this because um, we want it to be right about here on each of them, right? So here, yeah. here. And then here, basically, so the people at home know, I'm basically trying to go to this point. You could almost see the line where the circle met the uh, rectangle. And and, uh, and somehow I'm not, I'm close on one side, so I've, I haven't aligned it properly. Oh, okay. Well, let's, let's see here. It should be, let's see. No, I'm, I'm not even on my dim dimensions either, so... That's probably why I forgot to press the shift key. Oh yeah, that'll do it. And the dimensions I got for this were roughly, uh, we're going to call it 132 by 132. Let's see. That seems pretty close. Once we kind of get those dimensions in place, uh, let's go ahead and center everything. Now there is a weird thing with Tinkercad. If I was over here on a corner and diagonal and tried to center it, it may uh, at some point not center correctly. In this case it will, but there yeah. are circumstances where it won't. So if, if for some reason you hit center and it seems really weird, that, that could be because you're on an angle or you have the object rotated slightly. Yeah. And it's just like, like ham radio, you experiment until you get it. Mm hmm. Yeah. And you fail far more than you, you uh, get successful on your first tries. That's absolutely... Some, somehow you'll, you'll end up uh, doing the right thing, I think. I think so. You know, and that's the thing. If, if you don't get it right necessarily, you, 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 know, you, you try it again or you, you take a couple steps back because there's this cool back button here in Tinkercad, which works uh, as long as you're in the same session. Um, so now we're kind of like in this position where we need to make these awesome rounded edges right here um and uh, the way we, we were going to do that is yeah basically... I, I was ahead of you and doing the oh, wrong sure. thing so i'm gonna just skip back uh oh, yeah, no, i started no, no. rotating it rotating it uh, 45 degrees but that uh that didn't work out oh no that's okay um it's okay yeah let's do that and uh, in order to do that again we're just going to take instead of a cylinder shape we're going to take a, a cylinder which is grayed out which is a, a hole 
Um, however, if you were to select a normal cylinder, you could just go up and click hold yeah. and it'll convert it to a hole. So that kind of works out well. And then again, we're going to change our sides to 64. And uh, just want to give a huge shout out to everybody watching. Thank you guys for watching on this fabulous Wednesday evening. Uh, the numbers have been a or, bit low. Or Thursday morning. Or Thursday morning, depending on where you're at. Hey, <laughs> maybe it's Friday somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the numbers the numbers have been a little bit low on the streams, but uh, I'm just grateful that you guys are enjoying the content and will continue to do it as long as people are continuing to enjoy it. So thank you all. Yeah, um, and I, I think cam radio YouTube is, is important just to, to get new hams uh, to be interested in the hobby. I, I respect the fact that uh, there's just so many different uh, ways of learning. Some people will read a book and be like, yeah, no problem. Some people some people like YouTube, and uh, I think it's yeah. it, and hands-on, of course, is always good, in my opinion. You know what uh, I'm going to do real quick? Uh, I'm going to take that square, and I'm going to change the color on it just to kind of give me a distinguishing, like, to distinguish between the two, like, which yeah, color is which. Yeah, that'd be a good good idea. Yeah. And, um, basically now what we're going to do with the circle is, uh, I, I have mine out to roughly 84.79, we'll call it 85 by 80, uh, 85. Let's and find the circle and 85. My, I, my num key isn't working now. <laughs> yeah. I got a microphone in front of my keyboard. So it's, uh, there we go. All right. I got to use these ones. All right. And then we just drag it in until it intersects a little bit, right? Yeah. So here's the thing about it, and we're probably going to have to go smaller to be to be honest. But we're looking for a point where, and if we flip it on the bottom side, we could tell too. But we're looking for a point where we don't cross this. Uh, I'm going to just slightly bring that up for just a moment. We don't want to cross the the actual cross because then you're going to have. I'll just show you right now. If you were to group these, you would have a huge hole in the cross. Well, that looks horrible, yeah. right? Uh, so we want to line it up to a point where it's it's just almost like a nice curve, you know? And what I do is I, I find a spot here that's really close, and I try to align that a little bit, right? So, like, right there actually kind of looks pretty good. You could see that it kind of keeps... There might be a little yeah. bit of a... There might be a little bit of a... Yeah, there's a little bit of a gap... Because there's that little gap, all I'm going to do is, I'm, whoops, I made it more. Uh, I'm just going to use my keyboard and hit the right arrow until it is nearly flush and hopefully not going over, uh, which it is right now. So we'll just go with right there for right now. I think it'll be fine for the demonstration. Yeah, that's, purposes. that's far, fine on that side. I'm far off on the other side, though. Okay, yeah, me too. I'm See? probably a centimeter away. So what we could do at that point is just hit the corner button without holding down shift and bring it until it kind of looks like it's getting close. So basically when we do that, we're not, yeah, I got, I got the wrong height on my hole as well. So I'll lower that. So it's easier to, to see. And you know, once you kind of get it close, you could probably do fine adjustments. You know, the key is that we want to make it uniform, but you could pull it out so it's not completely a circle, kind of like I just did right there. Yeah. And then that helps with that smoothness, I guess you'd I'm say. Just a little bit uh, too big here. Let's see what you got going on. I'm going to put you on the full screen. Yeah. Yeah, you're just, you got it. You're just, a, yeah. just adjusting. I think I'm pretty close there. Perfect. Nice. So, you know, the easy way to tell is to... to uh, don't group everything. Just group the the green square and the. Yeah, hole. I'm just gonna make the hole a little bit bigger here. Sure. Uh, now I'm not sure over here. No, I'm not quite there. Or I need to move the. See, so, yeah, uh, so yeah I gotta pull it forward a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pull and it. And then down. I'm probably off here. You're getting closer. That's good. That's about it. Uh, 
Molson wants to know if you can take measurements in this program. This is one thing I don't like about the program. You can. Uh, there's a ruler up in the upper portion of the screen, um, but it makes it very difficult to read it. Yeah, I, I find the measuring part in, uh, in Fusion 360 hard as well. So but then again, I'm not used to, to do, using uh, CAD software, so that might be it as well. That looks pretty close right there. Yeah, I think I'm close. Let's try to group it and see. Okay, great. So, yeah, just... Uh, uh, oops. Now, that's fine. Now you could do it to undo and perfect. Yeah, you're back to the spot. So that's a good thing to, to make note of, though, is that the undo feature is really valuable. In yeah. This. Uh, I would not group the red portion, just the green to the whole. And you'll see why in just a moment. Whoops. Yeah. I'm just going to see if I can group just those. Should be... Okay, that's actually pretty close. Right, yeah, it's not bad at all. Um, oh, it'll be good enough for for today. Yeah, yeah, and, and again, um, let me go ahead and bring my screen up. You know, again, it's one of those things where uh, if you had all the time in the world, you could definitely concentrate on perfecting it. I'm gonna group mine as well, and I have the same kind of thing going on. Like, I don't like that lip, and it's gonna really bug me. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but. Um, you know, for now, I, I suppose it's okay. Yeah. Um, Just don't zoom in too far and it'll be good. Right. I, you know, so the other thing that we could do at this point is uh, there's two, I guess, theories that we can go about on this. And I don't remember what we did when we when we ran the trial but run. We're, we're actually not even, or I'm not even on, on the both of the sides, though. Uh, Let me see what you got. Hold on a second. I'm not actually happy with this, with this at all. All right. So when you say you're not even... Yeah, I'm I'm a little bit further off here than I'm on the other side. I've cut more off on on the bottom part here oh, than okay. on the Just, left yeah. part. So the cool actually thing is left then, part uh, left part is hidden behind my myself. So I'll move it over here. Sure. Uh, there we go. I see what you're saying. So you're not uh, yeah. you're too far up at one point. I think is what you're saying. Yep, I am. So you could just ungroup it at that point and then adjust that circle a little bit more. And this is typically, I think this was our hardest kind of part last yeah. time too that should actually be um i'd i'd wish there was a function that would do this halfway automatically though would be nice yeah let's see just got to find a corner of my circle here and i think what you're gonna find is uh hold on See if I put it more like an oval, uh, or probably less like an oval. At least it looks nice before I cut it. Let's try to group it again and see what happens. Yeah. I'm doing the same thing over here. Yeah, it looks a lot better. Yeah, I'm going to go with mine now, right, as well for, for yeah. demonstration purposes. But so here's the cool thing and why I told you not to group the mm, the red pieces is we're yeah. going to we're going to copy the 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 tri or the square, the green square as it is now, and we're going to paste it right now just once. Let's see. And then just rotate it. Yeah, uh, there's a button on the top there. It's a, a mirror button. And uh, basically, we're going to hit mirror, and then we get these little arrows that are on the screen that allow us to, to rotate yeah. one way or another. Let's go uh, hit the left-right rotate button. And uh, right now, we don't have to worry about perfecting where it's going to go. Just kind of put it in the rough area and yeah. then paste another one, and uh, we're going to mirror that one again, uh, this time up and down. And then one more for the last quadrant, right? So mirror, and then left, right. Let's see. And then up, down. 
this was actually a lot easier than when we tried last week. It was, yeah. It's uh, it's one of those things where you know once you kind of get going and you do it once or twice, it's you start to remember things. Now, the first thing we're gonna do. Uh, let me know when you're there. I'm sorry. I'll yeah. Pull, pull you up on the screen. Oh, you're there. Yeah, right? I, ju I just aligned it now. <laughs> Perfect. I was just gonna say the next thing that you want to do is just select everything on the on the screen here. And alignment's yep. always kind of the key about 3D design is making sure that the parts are aligned. So once we're aligned, we're we're going to go ahead and let me sorry about the screen thing. Yep. Uh once we're aligned, we're we're going to unselect everything but just reselect the green spots, right? So I just uh went to a corner yep. here and selected the greens and then we're going to actually ungroup every uh those green things. And uh it was weird that didn't. Oh, you got three nice circles. I got one. Yeah, I think it's a it's kind of like a matter of finding an angle where it selects them all because you got to remember there's one portion that I'm trying to select right now and yeah, oh yeah, there there it's are already of course curved, there there so. are four four green parts now. So right, uh, perfect. And so let's see if I can't get this again. And how can I do that without doing the red part though? Just like this. Um, so. I'm kind of like looking directly over the yep. uh, object and uh, I'm going to start dragging with my mouse down and I'm going to go up, but not in, in the green area, but not hitting the red. Yep. And that should select all four of them. At that point I could hit uh, on group. Yep. Let's see if that happens here. Yep. That worked. Excellent. So then, oops, let me get that out of the way. So then um, we're just going to select everything and group it. Yeah, let's try to do that. Oh, that was the wrong button. Oh, there we go. Excellent. So let me pull your screen up here just to give everybody the... Uh, yeah, looks good. And then... Um, you know, I guess the next step was, you know, we have a object here as we rotate it, we should see that it's pretty well even, you know, so I just rotated it 45 degrees. And I mean, it looks even enough right now on all sides. Again, if I had the time, I'd probably one thing yeah, that my, is, mine's mine's not completely even, but it's good enough as an example, I think. One thing that's bothering me about mine is, um, those triangular pieces or the squares that we made are a little bit lower than my actual uh, cross, what is now a cross or my X right now. Yeah. So I'm just going to ungroup everything real quick and figure out why. Okay, somehow I got my this object up to 6.57, so I'm just going to bring that back down to 6, and then there we go, and then regroup it again. So you group everything. Uh, when I do that, the cross disappears, so... Or... Yeah, your cross should disappear because the reason you're still seeing my cross yeah. is my height differences between the squares. Ah, okay, yeah. Yeah, and that's what I'm trying to correct real quick here. Um, somehow somehow I got a bad habit in here, and <laughs> uh, I need to correct that. Okay, five, six, seven, that's the problem right there. Boom. And then I'll try to regroup it. And now I shouldn't have the cross on there anymore. Let's see. Yeah, oh, looks uh, good. good. Good enough for now. You know, again, these circles now need to go down. Uh, hold on. It's that obsessive compulsive trait. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Why did that change again? Six. Six, I said. There we go. Try to group that again. Okay, so, you know, now we're kind of looking about the same, which is good. Yeah. Um, so let's focus on the center hole now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a hole. And this, we're just going to make uh, 60 by 60. And the height doesn't necessarily matter. Well, it's a hole, so it shouldn't matter. Right. As long as it's bigger than, uh, than the surface you're cutting through. What's up, uh, B. Kenny? How you doing, man? And, uh, of course, you know, now that we have a circle somewhere near the center, we're just going to go ahead and hit that align button. 
and we're going to align both of these, uh, both sides, the, the middle bottom and the middle left. Uh, once we get that, we're just going to group it. There we go. And, uh, yeah, so realistically now, um, maybe the, the hole, you know, if the hole was going to be that big 60 by 60, we probably would have wanted to go larger on the actual, uh, yeah. be, and the reason for that is you need to have a spot for, uh, guy rings as well, depending on yeah, where, and where you, the you need it to be a little bit stronger though. It looks a little bit too thin. Right. It, it, it and depends I, on what I'm just going to sh show off these. This is probably the most valuable tool you can have yes, when absolutely. Uh, designing stuff. In fact, uh, I got one right they're here. They're good too. calipers. Yep, you're absolutely right. And uh, they work great, and they get you, you know, to uh, pretty close to where you need to be as far as measurements go, especially when you're trying to measure out a, you know, a pole. Um, yeah, they, they may be a little thin. It depends, of course. Uh, it depends on what material you use because... Yeah. But that is the definite breaking point because it's a, a lot thinner. Now, one thing I should mention with 3D design is, as I understand, and it makes a lot of sense, anytime you have a 90 degree angle, that's going to be like a natural weak point. And so whenever you could do curves, do curves. Yeah, right? they're, they're a lot stronger. Kenny says, uh, $7 at Harbor Freight. That's right. I think I got these at Home Depot because I didn't want to drive to Harbor Freight. <laughs> but uh, all right, so we got the hole and uh, we got that grouped and centered and everything. So really the only other thing that at this point we would have to worry about would be the antenna wire holes, right? Yeah. And uh, so go ahead and create a new hole uh, or, you know, a new cylinder hole. And uh, let's just make it, I was going to say 20 by 20, but that seems kind of, oh, four, okay, yeah. let's make it five by five. How about that? Yeah, you should be able to fit most wire in there. I would think so. And, uh, and again, that's where the calipers would come in handy, I'm, I'm certain. I'm going to uh, put you on the full screen designing real quick. I'll be right back. Yep. Uh, so I don't have really any idea what I'm doing here, but uh, uh, at least we got to try to get the hole as, uh, as centered as possible. And uh, Sean actually had a trick when we did the dry run last week, and uh, I don't remember that right now. Uh, but, uh, and then again, I don't know what I'm doing here. So, uh, let's see. I think that's pretty close. And, uh, best, uh, Stian says here in the chat, the best part of Tinkercad is naming of the project. Well, it is, uh, the, the names are, are creative. And, uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's always fun to make something and it's always fun to, to print it afterwards, uh, and, uh, actually have a physical object. Uh, for me that grew up, uh, during the eighties, uh, that would be just pure magic. So, uh, 3d printing is, uh, is at least for me, uh, pure magic and you're back. I'm back. Yeah, you're a lot better running the show than I am. No, nah, nah, you're good. You're good. I appreciate it. Hey, uh, I hope I don't pronounce your name wrong. Stian, uh, the best part of Tinkercad is naming of the project. <laughs> That's yeah, right. Yeah, I, I just mentioned that. <laughs> Dazzling Lulia is mine. I don't know. Yeah, um, mine's Grand Lilo Jacob. So we need to try to find a uniform spot to put these. And uh, I guess this could become tricky. But yeah. You know, uh, I just kind of got it into a spot where, you know, I still have those lines that are here. And so I just basically am, uh, I'm lining both of those up. You see that right there? Yeah, I yeah. see that. I'll, I'll road in mine and see. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. And good then, enough. No, nah, we're not. And then I'm not center, but I think I could easily go a line and, well, let's, no, that didn't work. I forgot about this. I'll, one. I'll try to do doing the same. We figured it out last week though. We uh, did. It might've had something to do with adding another uh, rectangle. Um, let me see. Basically as a measuring tool. And then if, if anyone in the chat knows how to do this, please feel free to, to comment. Oh, you know what? If I rotate everything back 45 degrees again, this is that thing I was talking about where sometimes things don't yeah. appear to align. And so I rotated everything back 45 degrees on the plate 
and uh, basically now what I'm going to do is... Yeah, I'm so gonna, you, you put another rectangle on top there. You got it for right now, yep. just to see... So I don't need, I don't necessarily even need that rectangle. I'm kind of getting it right. Now, uh, what if I just, well, mine's actually, if I wrote in mine 45 degrees, let's just try something here. Sure. And then uh, without the, the square or the rectangle there, let's see here. So if I do this way, yeah, I managed to center it pretty good, I think. Yeah, so what I did is I copied two of these, or I, I made two cylinder shapes, and then yeah. I put them roughly at the spot. I selected everything, hit the align button, and then aligned this one here. Now I'm going to just select those uh, those two that I just created. So and how did just copy the cylinder, though? Yeah, just the cylinder. I'm going to copy the cylinders and then paste them and rotate and them. That, yeah. 90 degrees. But uh, just the cylinder? Uh, just those two yeah, cylinders no. that I created. So Yeah, you, you created two. I didn't. So that's... Oh, yeah, yeah. But what if I selected all, though, and... Uh, uh, let's, see. let's see here. I'm just going to try something here. Sure. And then up to the top yep. and yep, that's uh that's what we did. Wrote yeah, wrote it at ninety degrees. That's uh that is a better way to do it. You're absolutely right because then you have uh, in the same exact spot, right? It might not be better though. It's uh, and then align it. Okay, uh, something, all my holes ended up in the middle now. Oh, yeah, so that is a problem I think we ran into last time. Too, and because when somehow you... I can't undo. Let's see here. Uh, if you yeah. can't control V, the undo button is... Uh, yeah, I, I found, found the undo button here, so... Okay, cool. But let's see if I do the align. Uh... So the alignment tool is going to work a little bit different here because, well, if you try to yeah. align everything uh, at the same time, it, yeah, it's going to force it in the middle. Yeah. Um, but if you were to... Just do two well, at a time, Well, every, everything should be aligned because we already aligned it on the one. Um, but we but we have, you know, the only thing that's really not going to be fully aligned... Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. My... Uh... My shapes aren't perfectly aligned, so I thought I'd uh, align those first. But uh, you could probably select with the shift uh, opposite whole cylinders and your main object. So see. I deleted three of the four main objects, so I only have one object I'm working with again. If I do it like this and see now Let's what happens. Yeah, that works. Perfect. Uh, at least that, yeah, I'll... It'll be good enough for now, I think. Sounds sounds good. And uh, I'm just going to do the same thing here. I'm going to select this one and then the opposite one, as well as the main object, and then align it again, and we should be good there. So then, really, all we have to do is group them. And uh, y y I guess you now have your spacer, right? Yeah. Uh. You know, and then I guess since we're done, if we really wanted to, you could start ungrouping things and try to fix those circles if you wanted to <laughs> yeah but it actually turned out at least if not good luck and it's even so that's yeah, good i think that's the key right so with a dx commander as i recall um or any really uh multi uh multi i was going to say multi-fan uh, multi-band vertical uh, antenna you want to have a spacing uh, of at least five and a half inches between each of them as i as i understand and i've seen I've seen that to be kind of reliable as far as if they're closer, there's some kind of interaction uh, going interaction yeah. between them. Yeah. So, you know, you could always, if you needed to hold down the shift 
select everything and hold down the shift. Well, let's group this first. And then you could hold down the shift right here. The problem is, is as you're holding down the shift, you're also yeah, you're increasing make, the size the of that yeah. hole. And, uh, well, then it's not going to be correct for your your uh, MFJ pole or your jack eye pole or whatever. So, um, yeah, that was uh, – actually, that worked out well. We did it in 50 yeah. minutes this time. Which... That's, that's really, really good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the other things too is last time, you know, we, we used like a whole, um, we used a whole, uh, square or diamond shape this time, but last time we actually used squares individually per yeah. quadrant. So I'll show the people at home what I'm talking about. And that, that's a good, uh, explanation that there's always a different way to do things. Right. So last time we basically had this object here, which was a square. We, we aligned them to the lines right here and, and here. Um, and then we put our circle kind of, you know, right there, we grouped the circle hole and the, the square, and then we copied this and pasted this over and moved them where they needed to move. So again, multiple ways to do the same thing. Yeah. Um, neither of you look like Tamitha. I am not Tamitha. She's on in 10 minutes, nine minutes, <laughs> but, but Hey, uh, I'm going to take my screen off here and yeah. Hey, thanks for resubscribing, Dennis. I appreciate it. It was funny because uh, a few weeks ago, Dennis was like, I unsubscribed. And I thought that was uh, Dennis 86 DM. And I was like, I was like, whatever, he's messing with me. And I was like, it wasn't <laughs> Dennis 86 DM. <laughs> Thanks for resubscribing. Uh, so we, we, uh, we finished here. We have about nine minutes left. I, I was hoping yeah. a, the chat might have some questions or uh, anything along those lines. And Ron is correct. The FT8 off is tomorrow and it's on my channel tomorrow. Yeah, and uh, I probably won't be participating that time either. Uh, right. Staying up past my bedtime once a week is more than enough. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you being here, man. I have fun, and I'm, you know, I think the pursuit of uh, us trying to teach less experienced people is is really going to do yeah. a lot to the hobby. So, you know, and I, I can... and I'm a, oh, sorry. No, please, please. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of learning by failure. And, uh, that's kind of my motto. Uh, you, you have to fail in order to, to do something right. Yeah. Yeah. And I've said that before where, uh, it's not really truly failing unless, unless you quit. Um, so if you keep trying and eventually you get it, those are just kind of like learning lessons or stepping stones. And, and I truly do believe that it's, uh, uh, you, you almost have to, you know, because yeah. you're, you're not going to get better or grow stronger unless you Put it out there yeah. and you fail. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and you get to learn how not to do it, uh, just to figure out how to do it and which way works best for you. And there are always several uh, ways to, to reaching your goal. Yeah, there totally are. And uh, it, that's the thing, too. Nobody's going to tell you you're wrong or right. Uh, maybe they'll tell you there was an easier way to do it. And then again, you learned. Um, but as long as it gets the job done, hey... Now, Dave Rollison says, my background is architecture and engineering, used AutoCAD forever, but 3D printing and getting ideas from Dude, I'm enjoying this and looking at new projects. That's awesome. And I'm happy to hear that. Thank you. So let's see if there's any comments yeah. here. And uh, uh, Anime Wild Cascadia Radio says, yeah, I appreciate your analysis, Morton. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's not just about 3D printing. It's, it's life in general. That's right. I, Learning by failure. You're, yeah, you're right about that. Um, that, absolutely 100% correct. And, and so here's the cool thing. I don't know how you get your ideas. Like when you decided you were going to design uh, uh, the dipole, uh, I I find inspiration like really anywhere I go. And I'm like, I bet yeah. that could be an antenna or I, I bet that would be a really cool. <laughs> and that, that, that's a ham perspective though. Uh, looking at antennas everywhere you go or yeah. figuring out, well, work. Let me, let me show you what I mean if I can, yeah. if I can find it. So, uh, well, he's off, uh, I'll continue. Um, the, the idea of my antenna is actually just, uh, having something that is simple and field repairable and also lightweight because, um, as I discussed the last time I was on with, uh, Sean, uh, my kind of portable is not a big truck. My kind of portable is everything fits in a backpack. Let's see what yeah. he's got there. Okay. Is, yeah. You're is that right. a mic, mic stand? No, uh, I was at Goodwill. Goodwill's my like second home. <laughs> and th this is a, a holder for a green screen. So it was, a, it's a green screen. 
but I looked at this shape and this object, and this is exactly what I've been envisioning in my head. I just didn't know it. Um, <laughs> I'm going to make an enclosed case like this, and it's going to have a dipole section here and a, a dipole section here. Yeah. And these will be both 40 meters, and these will both be 20 meters, you know, so I know, be that, not, nice I know that. Nice design for a fan dipole. Yeah, exactly. I know that other people make something like that, too, because really, in theory, you could also put it on a, uh, a vertical or a horizontal axis. But yeah. I'm like, that is a slick shape. And I like the fact that you could put in screws, too. Uh, there's just inspiration everywhere if you're looking yeah. for it. Hey, Dan and, says, and, uh, local host, uh, here's a question for both of you. How do you keep track of any ongoing or upcoming projects? <laughs> uh, I don't. Yeah, you know, a... <laughs> uh, I actually have this big list of videos that I plan to do for my YouTube channel, and uh, I always find something else to make a video about. So, uh, uh, but in case I run out of ideas, I still have the list. I'm laughing because that's the same way as me too. Like I have a, a blackboard here, and months ago I was like, "All right, I'm gonna start writing down what I." And there's still stuff from months ago when I got that blackboard. Right? Yeah. <laughs> So realistically, it comes down to um, I have ideas as backups is what I decide to say. But then when an idea hits me, uh, I yeah. pretty much start going to work on it right away. Yeah. Uh, and then you just get into the flow and you kind of forget about everything else. Joseph says at work, we call it R and D, rip off and duplicate. <laughs> yeah. Sounds fair. Uh, I'd like to call it inspiration. The MFJ Big Ears Hub. Thanks, Jay. I appreciate it. Let me take a look at that. Ears I'll have to hub. Google that. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. Oh, wow. <laughs> Let's see if I can pull it up here real quick. See, so, yeah, I got it. I think I have it here if OBS works. There yeah. you go. I got it. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Uh, let me take that off the screen. Yeah, there it is, the the MFJ Big Ear Hub. Yep, that's yep. Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I put the SO239, well, I was going to say toward the middle, but the problem I'd have with that is uh, there's going to be um, a mount there for the top of a, a carbon fiber mast. So yeah, that might... so are you thinking about using ham sticks for, for your dipole design then, uh, Sean? Uh uh, for that one, most likely, yes. However, yeah. tomorrow I have an episode or a, 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 a short or whatever you want to call it coming out. And uh, I designed something and I tested it with telescoping antennas on 20 meters. So I had 40 meters or I had a half a wavelength of 20 meter dipole horizontal on top of a mast with something I designed. So you'll see yeah. that tomorrow. It was, it was really fun and I really <laughs> didn't think the weight of those telescoping antennas at fully extended was going to, was going to be supported by the, the piece that I made. But that's the cool part about this designing this, this testing too, right? Is then it is. And, uh, and actually figuring out that your wild ideas work. Yeah, that's exactly it too. It's like, so you, you find out it, it works and sometimes it surprises you that it works as well as it, 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 uh, as you intended it to, or, or better than you intended it to rather. Right. Yeah. It's exactly like that. And, uh, and I find 3D printing just a tool to just fix your everyday problems, whether it be in ham radio or anything else. I know you told me before, what kind of uh, 3D printer you got? I got an Ender 5. Ender Pro. 5. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Ender 5 Pro converted to direct drive and with a glass bed. That's right, the direct drive. And so the so 5 has a the bigger first bed, too. Yeah, and the first thing you do uh, when, when you buy a 3D printer is print new parts for it. Just to improve <laughs> yeah, the printer. Right. You need to you need to print this part because it didn't come with it. Or uh, if yeah. you do this, it'll stabilize it more. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. A lot of people might get frustrated with that, but if you go in knowing to expect that, it's usually a pretty fun time. Okay. Hot yeah. Three D printing is a hobby by itself. <laughs> it, it it is. It really is. My buddy local host who's here in the chat. He's a big time three D printer. And uh, Dan, thanks for being here. Uh, well, everybody really thanks for being here. We're at uh, 759. Ham Nation is coming up next on Ham Radio Crash Course's uh, page. So I'm not going to keep you all too long. Uh, thanks for being on here more than I had a good time. We'll bring it back on soon. Think about some kind of cool something we could build or do. Yeah. We'll do it. I'll, I'll figure something out and uh, <laughs> we'll stay in touch. And yeah, sure. uh, uh, if you guys want to check out my channel, uh, please do. It's linked below, by the way. Uh, I forgot to mention that and I apologize. Uh, it 
one of the first things you'll see if you check out the description is a link to his channel. Um, so yeah. Check him out. And subscribe, th thanks like for him. that. I appreciate the support, Sean. Yeah. Tell him Ham Radio Dude sent you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> with that, uh, thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, Liberty Cave, thanks for being here. Wild Cascadia Radio, uh, Joseph Collins, GP, RQ, uh, local host, as I met, Shooter Ready, Stand By. Uh, we got Stian, I believe, and I'm sorry again if I pronounced it wrong. Uh, Lon, thanks for being here. Uh, Jay, Phil, thanks for being here. Dave, thanks for being here. And uh, Wild Cascadia Radio, I said it again. Uh, and uh, B. Kenny. So thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Yeah, you too. Uh, take care. Thanks, Gordon. Bye.